Alrighty, cool. Uh, this is a little talk I like to call a foray into thread per core programming or, or architecture. Uh, something I discovered semi-recently and thought it was just exceedingly cool. Um, and when my friends volunteered me for a talk, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. That seems neat. Um, cool, yeah, so this is a foray into thread per core programming or Uh, or I bought the whole CPU, so I'll use the whole CPU, making your program go fast and do other things fast too. <clears throat> I wanted to put a like Zoolander meme in here, but I wasn't sure about copyright, so. Alrighty, uh, let's, just, let's just set the scene a little bit, a little bit of background. Um, lots of applications, probably lots of ones you're already writing, you've already used, um, probably do quite a lot of stuff. There's probably a lot of like tasks that have to be done, there's some like, there's a reasonable degree of parallelism, there's like, you know, some, you know, do some work here and then maybe kind of like when that's not being done, drop back. Something like, you know, serve requests and, you know, kind of like latency sensitive, but at the same time, you wanna run some background script to clean this up or vacuum some table or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, lots of, you know, reasonable degree of concurrency, uh, all familiar to us. Um, also, core counts on CPUs, or in the case of something like Lambda, um, these, these go up. This is like the num number goes up. It's like every year, it's like CPU manufacturers are like, and here's something with even more cores in it. Um, you're like, so cool, yep, that's great. Uh, and Rust is nice and speedy, and it's got some cool parallelism things, you know, sharing XOR, mutability, rayon, et cetera, et cetera, work stealing, that's cool. Um, can we do more with that? Can we like get more out of these cores? Um, okay. Oh, and I missed the one about NVMe devices because uh, a few years ago, obviously, storage would have been slow and you know, don't serialize anything to disk because disk is slow, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that gap, somewhat smaller with things like NVMe drives. You can get commodity stuff, you know, seven gig a second, like, read, it's nuts. Um, anyway, so what does this lead to? This is going towards kind of like unlimited power. If you've got an NVMe drive and you've got a modern Linux and you've got like 32 cores on your thread ripper, it's like you can do a lot, right? If you can, if you can harness all those. Um, <clears throat> cool, so uh, introducing the concept of thread per core programming, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's basically you have a thread per core. Terribly uninteresting are uh, kind, of, kind of unto itself, but that's kind of, it's really only the start of it. Uh, the sort of, the underlying theme here is that we want to like divvy up our application. Um, yeah, we want to divvy up our application so that we separate out the incoming work into as many kind of like independent shards as we possibly can. Um, and we don't really want them to communicate too much um, because that would mean waiting in queues or waiting for locks and mutexes and stuff. And as evidenced by the uh, next slide, um, welcome to the inconvenience queue because waiting for things is boring and bad. Um, so let's not do any of that. Um, so uh, we can do some things like we can shard our incoming data, which means, and then we can hand that off to a, to a thread. We can pin the thread to a CPU. So this, your operating system won't then punt your thread and shuffle it around. That's great for your instruction cache locality, your data cache locality, because the next time your thread runs, uh, your CPU, oh God, that's, your CPU won't be like, oh, and by the way, here, let me reload up all of your data back into the cache. Um, yeah, if you don't need to spend time waiting for that, that's time you can spend like doing productive work, right? That's, that's good. Um, and you know, not shuffling stuff around. I already covered that. Uh, good for throughput and latency. Um, just some stats to back this up. Uh, this cool piece of research was basically like, if you follow this architecture, you can cut your like your tail latencies. Um, uh, I think it was Microsoft who did a study on basically like if you can cut your like 
the worst of your like tail latencies, you can end up reducing your like your main application sort of like serving latency, which is cool because it's kind of like counterintuitive. You're like, well, we'll make the fast parts go kind of kind of fast, and that's how I get my application to go faster. Mm, not quite. Um, what else? Uh, Scylla DB, the Cassandra DB drop-in uses thread per core, uses a library called C star, and Red Panda, which is a Kafka drop-in, also written in C++. Um, I know this is a Rust talk, and C++ is, uh, but bear with me. Um, also uses thread per core for reducing some of their tail latencies and getting more out of their machines. Um, cool. That sounds great. I really, I really sold it in. Lots of, lots of marketing talk. Um, how do we get started? How do we do anything with this? Um, cool. Introducing thread per core programming, and the way to start is you go to your local spotlight and you find the thread of your choice. <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. Um, seriously. Oh, oh, God. So, seriously though, there is a very cool framework um, uh, called Glomio, or, or Glomio, ow, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, that gives you thread per core sort of functionality and some async functionality for your threads, along with, uh, if your Linux kernel is recent enough, um, a thing called IOU ring for async IO, which is really cool, and direct IO for your, if you have an NVMe drive. Um, what they do, direct IO lets you skip the file system cache on the way in and out, which means you can kind of, you can write directly, more or less, uh, to your NVMe drive and read directly from your NVMe drive, which means noisy applications don't sort of slow you down. You don't have to wait for the page cache um, to like to flush. You don't get held up by other things going on. Um, you can also, what was it? Uh, yeah, very handy, very cool, very, very modern. Um, and it also has some really cool, uh, does anyone, is anyone familiar with control theory in engineering? Yes. Yeah, it has a, each thread gets its own scheduler, obviously, because each thread has a ooh, local async executor. And then these controllers that are attached to your thread are then powered by control theory. So you can go, oh, that's cool. Um, I would like to now have separate async task queues. And maybe for one task queue, the latency doesn't matter. For another task queue, the latency does matter. And then the tasks can specify their latency. And the scheduler on your thread will be like, oh, cool. There is no work in my task queues. I can just you know, continue ticking through my like, non-latency critical work. Um, and then as work comes in from the high, from the latency sensitive task queues, it will shunt your latency insensitive tasks out of the way and be like, sorry, these things have to complete first. So it's very kind of like, without writing a lot of code by hand to manage, you know, firing off background tasks and doing this and doing that, um, you can have all those functionalities, you can have it scoped to your own thread. Um, and it all gets nice and logical, very kind of easy to get your head around because you know exactly what's going on. Um, the other neat thing is that because these async executors are all thread local, uh, your, your futures and what you await no longer has to be send and sync because it never leaves the thread. You can have thread unsafe things now because it's like, no, this is fine. This is not going anywhere. Your ownership's all good. Cool. Uh, so putting it together, I've started a little project um, called called Tarkine, because it's a forest, um, and I thought it was cool. Uh, this is a, a, it's a like reverse text search little application. Um, it uses these things called percolate style queries. Traditionally, in a full text search, you would persist your documents, you would index them, and then when you make a query, the query is ephemeral, and you kind of, you look through all your documents, and you find the thing that matches, and you come back at that point in time with the said results. Uh, percolate style text search uh, works the opposite. You store your queries and you stream the documents through it. Um, and you then sort of you build up a persistent set of results and you can like you can notify on change or you can notify on 
uh, you know, you've got more hits or the, the sort, search order change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, useful if you want to search a lot, a lot, a lot of data and you have a reasonable idea of you know what you're looking for um, or you would like to rerun the query lots and lots and lots um, and you don't want to kind of sit there waiting for it to troll, you know, hold like 150 gig index every time you search. Um, so I thought that made for a fun problem and would make for a sort of good fit to this. Cool, yes. Uh, threads, little need of communication, we can shard up that data quite, quite easily. It's an unsolved problem uh, at the moment, bearing in mind this project is all of like two weeks old, whether the best fit is I shard the queries and pass all the data through all the threads or I shard the data and pass the, yeah, or whether I do it the other way around. Um, but that's why it's a foray into thread per core programming and not, uh, and not an explanation of the virtues. Um, and maximum, we also care about maximum, maximum utilization of all those resources because the throughput of the documents is kind of paramount, right? So you've got, you know, hundreds of terabytes of stuff you want to trawl through. You don't want to be waiting an unnecessarily long time just for each single one, uh, one to complete. Um, I think someone at a search engine called Manticore, they have this as a search functionality, they have this as a feature. Elasticsearch has a feature and in, in their documentation they had a like shootout and so my, my goal is to be able to beat the Elasticsearch throughput for, a, for percolate queries which I think several thousand documents a second so fingers crossed I can get there. Um, the other cool thing obviously is the IO Euring and direct IO being able to um, shunt that stuff to disk. Ooh, ooh. Being able to shunt things to disk as quickly as possible. You want to keep those. You want to keep the write and read queues for those drives as more or less as like full as possible, so that they're always doing like nice page size levels of work. Um, and this is a good fit for that, right? Because if you're streaming something through, you can probably like you've uh, you've probably got hits occurring, and so you want to like feed that off to your drive as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, and that's uh, feed them to the drive and blocking reduce the time spent searching new docs. Yeah, uh, that's the other advantage. If you're not, um, if you're just waiting for the drive to complete, that's dead thread time. You don't, we don't, re we don't really want that. That's, uh, we could spin out a new thread to do it. Um, but then if you do that too much, you risk like CPU oversubscription because you have too much like thread contention and you're like, your OS schedule is like, hey man, you've got a lot of th threads and so I'm just gonna start shunting things off because this thing completed in the middle of this thing. You're like, no, but that one was doing work. Um, which is obviously bad if you wanna focus on throughput and sort of like your optimizing your utilization. Cool. Uh, I have some code samples here. My code's not great. Fair warning. Um, I, it occurred to me quite late that I was like, oh, it's a Rust meetup. Pro people would probably be interested in code samples because crazy programming language, who knows? Um, so, ooh. Oh, it's a laser pointer. Neat, cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it has an API that like very much resembles your standard threading API, which is like nice, obviously, because you don't have to learn anything particularly exotic. Um, uh, in my case, I spin out um, almost as many kind of like, I think I have 16 cores in my computer and so I spin out most of them for the main sort of indexing workers and then I reserve a couple for um, a like a Tokyo runtime to run my like network server um, and then, you know, leave some for spare. Um, the placement fixed there is basically you're telling the operating system and the CPU, it's like, hey, this thread's attached to this physical core, you can't, you can't bump this off. Like, it has to run on there, um, which, gives, which is what gives us the instruction cache affinity and the, core and the data cache affinity that's, that's so useful. Um, yeah. Uh, this one's also a little like just 
um, demo of like the core kind of like indexing loop. Um, it's kind of ugly. Uh, it's kind of blocking. It's not very good, but um, it's like it's fundamentally kind of quite a simple thing. There's a, there's a bit of everything there stuff. These threads get their work off a lockless queue, a lock-free queue, rather coming in from Tokyo. Um, uh, tries to process them and then spawns uh, an immutable file builder, which is just like a nice high-level interface over some like direct I.O. Um, as an async task. So whenever it gets those matches, um, it sort of like it scatter gather style API out of your uh, out of your drive, um, and then they just sort of like complete in the background. And then the OS comes back and it's like, hey, all your stuff's there. And I'm like, cool. And then, and then on we go. Um, and ooh, ooh God. Yes, that is, that is my talk. Are there any questions? I think I took, oh no, yes. Say again, sorry. Ooh, I haven't, but that sounds cool. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, have I explored using thread local memory allocators yet? Uh, I haven't. Um, the moment my focus has been on kind of like can I stitch this framework into my code and like and get it going? Um, I believe there is some discussion on their like Zulip chat about um, a sharding and like thread per core aware allocator and what the best option is to use for that. So we'll probably get there, but yeah. <laughs> 